Today we're going to be going over the most broken decks that have ever existed in Dragon Ball Super Card Game. We will be looking at the decks that were so overpowered Bandai, the company, had to intervene and slay these decks by solicitating a ban list. Just like every other card game, Dragon Ball Super Card Game has also had the release of some cards that were so broken and made other DBS leader cards not worth playing at all. When the designers of Dragon Ball Super Card Game created cards like Flute, Unyielding Trunks, Bad Ring Laser, Cold Bloodlust, and The Child's Wish, they had no idea that they have just created a monster. Dragon Ball Super Card Game just got released with the first booster box, the Galactic Battle. That set, of course, started the whole Dragon Ball Super Card Game scene and for many decks, it had a good uprising. Luckily, with the first set, the game was fresh and many were just pretty much getting the rhythm of playing Dragon Ball Super Card Game decks like Broly, Goku, Vegeta. There was pretty powerful decks, but by no means were any of these decks considered broken. The strongest deck at release was Vegeta with his ability to, to pretty much deal critical damage, but by no means was he broken. Bandai's first release of a broken deck that was so overpowered began with Cell in their second booster box Union Force. Because of the fact that you could run what Dragon Ball Super Card Game players used to call the Cell Engine. This Cell Engine was a playstyle where you bring out Perfect Cell by turn 3 and Perfect Cell would work just like in the anime. It starts with First Form Cell absorbing Android 17 and Union absorbing into the Beast in Perfect Cell that has double strike dealing 2 damage then imperfect cell absorbs android 18 which makes the perfect cell come out of your deck then perfect cell would just literally rip your entire hand leaving you at only 3 cards in hand and then you have a double strike 30k beast monster to deal with then with the release of series 3 and the first draft box we had the most oppressing deck to ever come out in dragon ball super we had the rebirth of the evil emperor Mecha Frieza. The designers of Dragon Ball Super gave Mecha Frieza the ability to use extra cards for free at the cost of a life, allowing you to self awaken really, really fast and abuse extra cards like Objection and Minosha for relatively cheap. Combined with the Booster Box 3 Shigesh, which is a super combo that got banned because it allowed you to super combo 10k boost and play you a battle card that happens to be a Saiyan 3 cost or less for free. Mecha Frieza had the capabilities to have a very explosive start using extra cards and awaken turn 1. In some cases you were even able to swarm the field because of Shigesh being active turn 1. Either way Mecha Frieza's reign came to a stop as Bandai decided to rattle the leader making you not be able to abuse as many extra cards anymore. A new monster appeared with the release of Series 4 Colossal Warfare and Mecha Frieza out of the picture. The next deck that took Storm was the leader Kurudagon. This leader abused the cards Unyielding Trunks, Bardock the Paragnator, and Son Goten. These three cards combined with Kurudagon's Draw 2 ability made the most toxic deck to have ever came out in Dragon Ball Super Card Game. That deck was then known as Herodogarn Storm. The deck played an endless loop of using Bardock and the swap engine to pick up a life, awaken quickly, then swap into Goten that would draw you cards, then unyielding that would restand an energy. With one energy active, you could pretty much play the Bardock yet again and repeat. Bandai came to the rescue and had banned Goten Flu and limited unyielding trunks to one. That's how deadly that deck was. They literally attacked all the cards that would make that specific deck. With all those leaders gone and Bandai finally getting them out of the picture, a new broken leader arose from the shadows. And that would be 
Super Saiyan 3 Son Goku. He was a very unique leader that was getting some play upon release, but with decks like Mecha Frieza, Rudigar and Storm, Cell, Super Saiyan 3 Goku was not being represented as much until all the other cards got pretty much banned or errated. Then everybody started playing Super Saiyan 3. It was Super Saiyan here, Super Saiyan there, Super Saiyans everywhere. He was broken. He let you start off with two energies unawakened and then he lets you restand three of your energies back to active mode at the end of your turn for free. This leader was getting so much play that it was literally the only thing being ran everywhere. Bandai came in and just banned the leader altogether because nobody else would play any other deck. Bandai did a really good job banning, eradicating, and limiting all the broken cards in Dragon Ball Super Card Game. However, they released the biggest broken monster ever to be released in Dragon Ball Super Card Game. This deck was oppressing to play and twice as oppressing to watch people play. And this is Super Shenron. Super Shenron had the same concept as Herodogarn Storm. Bombard your opponent with an endless loops of attacks, this time with the new wish mechanic introduced into the picture. The deck utilized the cards A Child's Wish that allowed you to bring back to life a battle card that had 15k power or less for free. The card that people would bring back to life was Boma because upon play she withstood two of your energies and put two cards in your drop area fueling your leader's broken ability of getting a second turn when you end your turn. So uh, it was an endless loops of attacks, you fuel your drop area until you manage to get Super Shenron's broken ability of getting two turns, then you would just do another 30 minute turn and obliterate your opponent. Bandai must have thought that having almost an entire deck in the drop area would be a very difficult process in order to actually get Super Shenron's second turn ability going off. But some evil scientists have figured out how to achieve the second turn wish consistently and for that reason this was the most oppressing deck in Dragon Ball Super's history. This deck was so disgusting you would literally take 30 minute turns and when you end your turn you got another turn. Bandai came in and destroyed a child's wish and errata the Super Shenron leader that made the leader unplayable in the competitive play. Now we are in a time of peace in Dragon Ball Super card game because even though we do have consistent top winning decks like Toa, Shenron, Universe 6 Veggies, these decks are not oppressing. Bandai has been doing a really astounding job at keeping a nice balance to the game Everybody is enjoying the decks at their prime and are realizing that certain decks have weaknesses and depending on your matchup it is pretty much dictated whether you will win or not. Now we could finally enjoy a healthy card game state where you can play pretty much almost a variety of different leaders in the competitive scene and you can have a potential to win. So from now on Bandai has been doing an amazing job of not making these overpowered oppressing 30 minute self turn play decks. Thank you for watching, that's going to be the end of the video, let me know your thoughts on this type of video, if you guys could hit us a good like so I could work even harder to make more super videos like this one and make sure you guys are subscribed and like we always say, y'all stay super.